Hello everyone, and in this video I'm going to be talking about what the first month of medical school has been like for me. So I'm a first year med student and I wanted to make this video to reflect on my time and you know if I could talk to myself a month ago just say like you know what is this thing going to look like or to anyone else out there who's curious to know what does it look like. Um, I think the first thing which probably isn't going to entertain people but it's the truth is that med school is way more work than I anticipated. And to me, that's been kind of the biggest change for me personally has been learning how to accommodate being a medical student in my life. What I mean by that is in my past life, when I worked as a professional, you know, it was a lot different. Like you put in your time, you had weekends off, you had time, you know, if you needed, a, you know, an hour or two in the day to, to go run and do something, you just, you know, make it up later. But like, it was, it was reasonable. It was, it was a good work-life balance. Um, and that doesn't really exist as a medical student. Um, I really want to go to the beach. I've wanted to go to the beach since my birthday two weeks ago. I haven't had a chance to because there's just so much content that we have to be learning and studying and, you know, trying to recall that you just don't get the same opportunities that you had previously. And uh, I was telling uh, one of my family members about this and she told me that she's surprised that I'm surprised uh, because med school's a, a lot of work, no matter how you cut it. And so, um, it's a huge sacrifice. I don't know if that's the right word to use. I can use the word commitment, um, but basically know that going to medical school is a huge commitment. And I was thinking about this today on my bike after school, like, why am I doing this? Because this is an insane amount of work. And I think if you don't ask yourself why you're doing this, like there might be something wrong with you. So I was just checking in with myself and you know, I I think that the, the main reason I'm doing this and I'm here right now and I'm still going to keep seeing this thing through is that I think going to medical school or, you know, seeing this thing through is going to open up doors that otherwise wouldn't have been opened up in my life. I'm going to hopefully get to meet people and I've met some people already who are very cool and, uh, you know, I... I, I resonate with them and their values uh, and you know I think that's why you go really far out of your way and you sacrifice or you commit a lot of time money and energy into school is so that you can get these things out of it like you're not just here because you want to suffer and you know spend a bunch of money you're here because you want to meet people and you want to push yourself to see how far you can go and how hard you can go and how long you can go at these things. And it's a lot of work. Um, and there are some things that complicate school because of COVID. So much of our program is done virtually. It's basically University of Phoenix. Like there's, it's just video lectures and video tests and video, like it's, it's like, why do you pay all this money uh, for for a program that's virtual? Um, you know, there are in-person components. Anatomy is in-person. We have clinical medical reasoning courses in-person. That's when you learn how to do the actual doctor stuff of like examining a patient. Um, there's OPP, which is the, you know, how do we diagnose and treat somatic dysfunctions. Um, but the other stuff, the didactic stuff, the biochemistry, the physiology, the um, you know, genetics, all that other stuff is, it's all just basically University of Phoenix setting stuff of entirely virtual. And I really don't like it. Um, and I, I, I'm trying to vocalize this to people and I'm trying to stay professional. Uh, but it's just so non-engaging to sit behind a computer screen for eight plus hours a day just on lectures and to spend more time reviewing the lectures or making notes on the same computer in the same room, my apartment, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's 
there are better ways to do this than the way that we're doing this. And a lot of other medical schools do team-based learning to help students really engage with the material and also engage with other students to see that it's not just them who's struggling through it. And we have failed in that regard, in my opinion. Um, and I hope that we can incorporate more team-based stuff into our curriculum. Uh, and what I think good would look like, just so I don't sit here and complain, is a place where you have study groups that the facility helps mediate and create where these students are assigned lectures or topics and then once they've learned that lecture or topic they're responsible for teaching their group members that subject and in these group study sessions you're also going to be learning the content that your peers have learned who are now teaching you about it so you're teaching and learning stuff and you're thinking about questions that other people have and it's just so much more engaging than watching a pre-recorded low quality Zoom recording for 16 hours a day. And so that's what I wish things looked like. Um, but COVID and the business incentive of not having to assign more resources to maintaining a campus mean that we have what we have right now and that's the way things are. So that's the reality right now and hopefully it improves. Um, the hardest class that I'm taking is anatomy. Um, it's really tough because it's not just memorizing the muscles or the bones. It's about really thinking about landmarks and reason, like it's, it's not like it, it's a fine balance behind reasoning your way through something because like the anatomy professors tell us, you can convince yourself of anything sitting in front of a cadaver and you're gonna probably be wrong. Like you're gonna be convinced that's the brachioradialis when in reality, that's actually the extensor carpi radialis. And you're gonna sit there and you'll be like, why? That looks so much like the brachioradialis and you're gonna be wrong and the anatomy professors will tell you it's because you can see the tendon right here. You can see the median nerve right there. Like you can see these specific structures that you haven't even thought about that are telling you that this is actually what you're looking at. And so, so much time, effort, and energy go into those types of classes that it's draining. Um, I, I know that it will make you a better doctor, you're gonna be able to diagnose someone far more easily and quickly than someone who did this all virtually in that 3D augmented reality thing of like zooming in in a picture and being like, there's this muscle here, but that doesn't give you the appreciation for the nuances of humans. And also seeing in real life, what does this stuff look like and holding it and feeling it and, you know, cut, you know dissecting it. Um, and so there's just a ton of stuff that it's, you gotta take it in and you gotta keep taking it in and, and repeating it and seeing it and hitting your head against the wall and coming back the next day and just repeating that, uh, it, it, it makes it really tough. Um, the, the lectures are, are hard. There's, you know, just today there was like eight lectures. I haven't even watched any of them because I was still trying to catch up from lectures from yesterday. So I still like, it's, uh, 10, 18 right now at night. I have yet to even look at any lectures I have to look at for today. So tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday and Monday, uh, Monday's a holiday, but it's not really because I'm just going to have to basically be reviewing the lectures and making notes and trying to have some kind of study material because we have a test of all this stuff on Tuesday. So there's no break. And we also had the anatomy practical this same week. So it's like, there's been no gap at all in the intensity of the work that is expected of us to do. Um, and so for me, that's tough. It is hard to sacrifice so much over such a long period of time and to not be given any breathing room uh, that, you know, it, and, and to just have to learn in such an environment where it is not engaging and there's ways we can improve it team-based learning, huge way of helping us improve the social engagement and the material engagement, even through Zoom, we can still do that. Ideally you do it in person, but you can do it through Zoom, but like we're not doing it. And so it's like, 
you got to put yourself out there and like really step up and be like, how do we do this stuff? Like, how do we make it happen? And like, I've actively tried to reach out to people to form study groups and it is tough to find members that it will, you know, the chemistry will be right. Um, and it just takes a lot of effort and time and it's like, yeah, you can do it, but it's like, do you have that time and effort to put in when you also need to keep making sure that you're staying up with all the material that's give, being given to you. And so it's tough. Um, so that is the, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the hard part. Um, I will say, and I, I can't speak to this, but I will say that like, you know, some, uh, the second year students and third year students and fourth year students and people in their residencies, uh, say that like, you know, the first year is the most intense and the hardest because they really just throw you in on the deep end. I don't know if that's just our program. I don't know if that's every program in general, but you know, I will say that this has been super intense. Um, and the only way that I've stayed sane is by making sure that I have some degree of work-life balance. And for me, that comes in the form of getting on my bike, leaving my apartment, riding up to Mount Baldy, and then coming back. Uh, literally just getting out, getting some fresh air, getting above all the pollution and crap that makes the LA Basin what it is. But, you know, uh, that's what I have to do to, to stay sane. Um, and so, like, also making sure I, I even though, yeah, you should be studying right now or reviewing stuff right now. Like I still got to do groceries. I still got to do laundry. Uh, you know, there's things you still have to do. Like you still got to brush your teeth and shower. Um, so like, don't forget the really basic stuff of taking care of yourself while you're learning all this stuff. Um, so I think that's something that is easily, I, I know it sounds stupid, but it's easily overlooked when You've just got so much material. There's always a fire under your ass. Like there's never a moment where you're just like, I can just breathe and relax because it's like, no, you know, you really should be learning this thing right now, or you really should be reviewing this thing right now because you need to know it for the test that's coming up in a, in a day or two. And it's just like, you know, it, it's, it's kind of frustrating for me. And that frustration turns to anger, which turns to energy for me. And it's just like, you know, this is just me personally, but like, that's what gives me energy to keep going in school. I don't know if that's healthy or not, but like, it's gotten me this far. Um, but yeah, so that is, uh, that's, that's what the first month looked like. Um, I, I, I don't know if this is really like a happy ending story. Uh, it's, it is what it is, you know? Um, it's a huge commitment and a huge sacrifice and I'm doing this because I believe that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes it might not look like there is one, but I believe there is one, you know? And I, I think that, you know, this is worth the sacrifice to make me a better person, to make me more well-rounded person. And, you know, if I ever do become a doctor, at least I'll hopefully be someone who's able to know anatomy well enough to diagnose somebody who complains of tingling down their C8 uh, dermatome because I'll remember spinal levels and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's the material is definitely important. I just have a hard time motivating myself to care when it's presented in such a uh, boring way. Um, so we have room for improvement. Everyone's doing their best. Uh, everyone's trying to stay safe with COVID and the Delta variant. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, I think all the time I should take right now to talk about this stuff because I should be studying and eating dinner. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone out there is doing well. If there's any questions about what med school looks like this first month, happy to answer them. And, uh, hope everyone out there is staying safe and I will talk to you guys next time. So take care.